Computers are good at following instructions, but not at reading your mind. That's why you should always write tests in your application to make sure it performs how you intended it to. Testing also provides other benefits, such as easier refactoring, quicker debugging, and documentation about your application. Today, we'll be creating a Vue 3 app and adding unit tests with Jest. We'll do this by using the Vue Test Utilities Library, which is a set of functions to simplify the testing of Vue.js components. It provides methods to mount and interact with Vue components in an isolated manner. We'll also take a look at a more advanced use case, where we'll create a mock Vuex store for a component. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications. You can find links to resources and documentation in the description below. All the tools we'll be using today can come pre-configured when creating an app using the CLI tool. Make sure to select manual features and enable Vuex store and unit test options. When presented with the choice of selecting a testing framework, we'll be using Jest in this tutorial. The first part of creating any test is to describe the test suite. In Jest, we do this by using the describe keyword, where we pass in a string to represent what we are testing. This is commonly set to the name of our view component. Then inside the describe function is where we write our test using the test keyword. When you write your tests, you use the cert statements to describe the behavior of your code. There is a common pattern that suggests you should divide a test into three sections, a range where you configure and set up your test, act where you perform the actions to change the state, and assert to check that the state is as it should be. We'll be following this pattern throughout the code and our examples. Let's take a look at creating and testing a basic counter view component. To do this, we'll create a local counter variable and create a function to increment the reactive variable by whatever prop value it's passed in. Now in the template, we can call this function from a button and display the current state of the counter. Before we begin writing our tests, we can run Jest with a watch flag so that it automatically runs our test as we create them. Now let's create a test suite for this component. We'll start by creating a new test spec file and add the describe function. For our first test, we'll make sure that the count displayed in the HTML starts at zero. To do this, we will need to use the mount function from the view test library, which will mount the component in an isolated manner. The return value is a wrapper that provides some helper functions for interacting and testing the behavior of our component. Since we are just checking the initial state of our component, there is no need to act on it. For our assert statement, we would expect that the HTML contains a zero character. As you would expect, this test passed. Now that we have a basic understanding of how a test works in Vue, it's important to talk about what we should actually be testing. For UI components, I don't recommend aiming to test every single line of code because it leads to too much focus on the internal implementation of the component. Instead, we should write tests that assert the component's public interface and treats it as an internal black box. A single test case would assert that some input provided to the component results in the expected output. For the next test, we'll check that when the button is clicked, it increments the counter. We'll mount our component once again and use the find function to get the button we'd like to click. In our act section, we'll simulate a user clicking the button by triggering the click event. Now, in our assert, we would expect the value to be equal to one. But you'll notice our test failed. This is because Vue groups updates together, so it doesn't have to do unnecessary updates. This means we must wait for updates to run after a reactive property has changed. Another common test is to make sure that our component works correctly when props are being passed in. We can pass props to the component using the prop data option on the mounted component. Now, when we click the button, it will increase by five. In most cases, our components aren't this simple. They may call actions or mount state from a Vuex store. We'll modify our example so that each time it is clicked, it calls the Vuex mutation to update a counter in the Vuex store. This state will also be displayed by the component. When testing, we don't actually care what the mutations do or what the store looks like. We just need to know that the mutation is being fired when it should and that the counter state is used inside the component. If we were concerned about the functionality of the store, then we should create a separate test suite to make sure it works as expected. To correctly test this, we'll need to pass a mock Vuex store to our component when we mount it. Before we run each of our tests, we must initialize a clean Vuex store. We'll mock the mutation function with just mock functions. These functions give us methods to assert whether the mutation was called or not. Now we can write two tests. 
The first will check that the value in the store is displayed in the component. In order for the component to use the newly mounted store, we must pass it as an argument to the mount function. In the other test, we'll check that when the button is clicked, it calls the mutation function in the Vuex store. As you can see, all our tests have passed as expected. We have successfully created unit tests for Vue components and mocked a Vuex store. There are many different use cases out there, so I recommend you take a look at the Vue Utility Library, which covers them in more detail. If you like the content I'm creating, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Hope to see you in the next one.